Have you guys heard about MoEngage? No, what we do? So let me give a brief detail. So we provide solution to our customers by helping them re-engage their customers and retargeting them. Uh, am I audible till last? OK, fine. So uh, uh, how this retargetment works is, I'll give you a simple example, a funny example uh, happened with my friend. My friend is Nitin, and he just recently got married, and his wife's name is uh, Nisha. So they both invite me on, uh, uh, for a dinner. And in the middle of food, uh, Nisha's phone beeps. And she, there is something which takes all her attention. And she's like, yeah, I, I got it. The moment Nitin thinks that, OK, uh, uh, I should celebrate her happiness, his phone also beeps. Can you guys guess what would be happening? I think most of the men can guess this. What kind of messages the, they both got? So Nisha just got a message saying, hey, Nisha, your uh, favorite uh, dress you selected. And this is on 40% off just right now. I'm sorry. Oh, tech glitches. So uh, yeah, so Nisha just got uh, a lucrative offer which she, she could not reject. And Nitin got obviously the projected bills. Right? So this is how re-engagement, retargeting works. And we help our customers to re-engage their customers. So if you are one of those business holders who want uh, such uh, help in your product, come talk to my team. And if you're one of those who paid the bills, just look at the men sitting next to you. Uh, you will be fine. <laughs> All right, so coming to the topic. Uh, today we are going to talk about release status analyzer. I'm keeping it very short and simple. Why, what, and we'll end with Q&A. To give you a detail about why, I need a few, uh, few uh, answers from you. What does it look like, this slide? Something like before release, you might have, I'm assuming all of us are doing some or other level of automated testing. Right? And before release, you run those tests, or there is some automated way which runs this test, and there is a feedback there. But can you guys tell uh, if you had been sometime a gatekeeper or DevOps guy, and you might have uh, given the charge of taking the release and making this, uh, analyze, analyzing this test reports and give. So any estimated time, minimum time, you would be taking to analyze and tell that the release is good to go. And if not, why not? Any estimated time, rough idea? A day? Yes? So if you are having a very big product, and there are around 30, 30 to 40 tests, every test, on an average, you have to go dig into the test, see the reports, come back, see another report. And if you have a modularized system, then you can actually distribute your task also, different team looking into those feedbacks, and then collect this feedback, put it into some Excel sheet or mail or somewhere, and you, again, take the feedback forward. But in this process, what we are doing, what we are lacking here? We are lacking one very important factor is we do not have transparency across the teams. That is why you are the person who is always doing the test analysis. And you are not having accessibility of your test feedback to everyone. Why? I will, let's, let's take into the uh, real scenario. Let's go to the demo directly and see why. Not coming back. I want to go to the browser. I'm sorry, this happens. <laughs> this is not coming out. What do I do?
This happens if we take without we testing. Are fixing bugs in production. Uh, I'll answer this. I'm not really sure if we'll be able to handle this properly in weeks because it's in the tank already. Can we show on the laptop directly? But the laptop is also not showing it, right? Maybe I remove this. Yeah. Try switching the screen first. Try switching the screen. Okay, it happened. It's okay. So, uh, will you guys help me with this? Uh, you have internet on your phone. Can you just guys open uh, p00j4.github.io? We will take it live that way. Meanwhile, I'll just shut down and restart. That's what we do. P00j4. Oh, it comes back. Good. It's frightened of shutting down. Yeah, so you are on the page? Huh? P00j4.github.io. P00j4.github.io. Who said Mac is best? Apple. <laughs> <laughs> Only Apple. Yeah. Yeah, all on the same page? Do you see some screenshots saying uh, uh, test feedback, which shows some metadata? Yes? P00, I, I'll just write some. All right. J4. J4 dot github dot io. Yeah. So you you come down. You see a screenshot over there, right? So you see a uh, 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 test, Android test, iOS test. Firefox, Chrome, right? So compare this uh, screenshot with the, your traditional reporting. In your traditional reporting, what was missing? You were only aware about the tests which were going. Uh, you were not aware the metadata where this test was run, right? You were not aware that uh, which machine, which code against which this test was run. So that is why nobody was able to access, except the one who has written the test. Now uh, uh, just enlarge the screenshot and see those fields. First field you see on top, uh, the in, uh, environment and the uh, tag on which the, co uh, the code version, basically, on which this test is run. So the code version says you that the code version gives you the detail that I am the test run against that code on the environment version given there. So now, the developers who, who, uh, whose build is broken is now automatically, uh, automatically uh, curious to know that, oh, did my build broke this test? He will look into it. You don't need to sell that bug to him at this moment. And you see a few more things. Uh, in the town, you see the direct links to retail reports. You see screenshots. You see console. So right now, you cannot click. It's just an image. But in demo, if uh, I'm trying to open it. So we can actually directly see. So now uh, the dependency of analyzing the feedback sh has shifted from that one person who is going to take call to everybody individual in the team, be it developer, be it QA, be it DevOps. A anybody can see and uh, process that information to collect that feedback. OK, releases to go. And if not, why not? So let's, let me just try one, one last time. I'll not do anything juggling. I'll just stick to the demo. So 
since I had shut down, I need to just start my process to show you. I had enabled the test locally. So ensure I mean Jenkins is dropped. So all my services are up. We can see, I was talking about this uh, comparison with this slide. I'll not <laughs> enlarge this design so that we do not get into problem again. So I was talking about this was traditional way, wherein no metadata was attached. And but if now you see, now if you see in the, your screen, there is a metadata attached with it. So come on, mouse, let me work. Okay, let's give it up. Uh, if I am just able to open my slide, I could show you that. That's fine. This is decided to not work. Demo blues. Okay, so uh, so in this case, the paradigm, uh, the understanding about this tool is not beyond the tool to understand that. Okay. Uh, if we are able to bring agility in the test feedback process also, in such a way that wherein every single person can understand your test reports, the, the problem is halfway solved, number one. Second thing, you are not depending on that one person, and the, a lot of manual efforts are reduced. It's not just coming. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, uh, so the... I, I am just I just want to open for the questions uh, you have seen the screenshots there right so I just want you to uh, be open and ask questions so that I can tell you uh, how you can utilize for your work do you find this uh, this uh, this kind of feedback interesting than the your traditional ones or anybody is doing some other way using some uh, some special tools which gives them feedback like this mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So uh, one one problem there is, so gentleman says that uh, whenever some test fails, they have, they might have integrated some emailer emailers which which notifies that a particular person he fixes he or she fixes that. But the problem here is, assume that you are in the uh, you are in the uh, fashion fashion of work where releases goes every day. And in morning, 5 a.m., the slot is fixed. Night test starts, and they break. There is nobody else to look into it. So at least for a DevOps in guy or the person who is taking the release live, for him to reach out to make sure, OK, uh, is this the web test only failed? Can I take the Android ka, uh, native live still? So the person, the dependency is still there in that case. Because uh, that mail which he is talking about, that mail is went in silos to the only that developer. The other people are not notified about it. So if that person has not seen, other are still unaware about that fact. Right? Yes, you can configure. But again, it's about. Yes, so, so coming to your point, I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about ideal world, wherein everything goes smoothly and everybody. I'm just taking like 80-20 cases. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like uh, people can comment on that. 80% of the cases, it gradually maybe at the day one, it may have so many failures. Mm -hmm. Which is true, which is true. But idea is number, not about test, test being failing or passing. The idea is about bringing uh, your, uh, making, making your test, getting your, uh, sorry, getting voice to your test. The idea is about showcasing your test in such a way that everybody feels uh, encouraged to see, look at it. 
Just like you monitor your production data, if you are a product manager or somebody, right, you will be monitoring your clients, what they are doing in some kind of dashboards. But why don't we think about tests about that? Same way, exact same way. So I have seen, from my example, uh, we'll come to it. So I have always seen from my uh, experience that people who has written tests, they are, uh, they are still, uh, they are still acting as an actor to see them, OK, what, what it is fail, whom to reach out. In this fashion, we can actually plug in the data. If you see the screenshot, there is a res responsible panel also, responsibles. We can actually uh, 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 add those responsible names there by just plugging in GitHub, commits, ka author names. So in a short, every single person can tell, look at, looking at it, this machine against this code, this test has failed. And these are the responsible uh, commit authors. Let's reach out to them only. It benefits from range of people, from QA, Dev, DevOps, CTO, product manager, everyone. Dependency is reduced in this fashion. And it brings more transparency uh, for all the teams. Uh, for developers, uh, they also feel happy because if tests are flaky, then QA has to look. They are not bothered. OK, if it is not my code, why should I look into it? They are not bothered about it. For QA, they are being heard. So it's a win-win situation for all the parties. And as, as an organization, it's a win-win situation for me also. I am seeing the live feed. So when the test runs, there is a live feed going on, which shows that test in, is in progress, which is not mentioned in this screenshot. So uh, you, uh, every single person get to know that, OK, uh, that the confidence uh, builds up, OK, uh, I have n amount of tests before releases goes. Yeah, come in. From the release management perspective, the main thing is we do have a release implementation plan. What you are referring to as a yeah. you know pipeline kind of stuff, and it is essential that you have different different environments. So yeah. these kind of environments, I think it's pretty common in lower environments, mm -hmm. because that's the main challenge, mm -hmm. and that stops the flow. Mm -hmm. In higher environment, it is much less mm -hmm. obviously, but from QA then see it then mm -hmm. higher environments as you go, the pattern changes. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty useful in my opinion. Okay. That really happens. Yeah. It's not so uncommon, actually. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I like the idea of you know, having this visualization and everybody is able to see it. Uh, what I'm not totally clear is you know, the tool, the real uh, novelty of the tool, is in the visualization or it's in the way it aggregates all the result of the different tests? And you know, So is the it that it intelligence what you are really uh, you know, referring to? Yes, the way it aggregates all the details. So the future also can be like, we can also segregate this visualization in terms of release numbers. So against this release, these were the tests and this was the state. So we could do that also. So it's about aggregating results and putting into some feedback manner. And if I may ask, how does the tool actually do it? So yes. it's, it's a very customized kind of logic, or it's generally applicable? Yes. So it, it's, it's actually a simple, small thing. Uh, but when uh, the idea credit I gave to my uh, CTO at that time, I was working with Vivo, and we had this problem. We had enormous tests. And he was never able to understand uh, like what, uh, what, all, uh, what all teams are doing. Are teams actually writing enough tests, or all teams actually uh, take, uh, like mingling up with QA team and sorting out things faster? So uh, it was a lot of heat in his mind. And that's where he said that we should some bring something like this, which brings the transparency. And that is where we thought, OK, look into the solution. So that is where we, we, we were already using Jenkins. We wanted to see, think about something like that. We did not want to create our own server and client application just for this. So we found one plugin called Extreme Feedback Plugin, which used to do only one job, was it used to bring the job name the test name, basically, test name, and uh, it is pass or fail. That's it. So I looked into, digged into the code base of it, and I figured out, OK, what if, if you look at the below the screenshot, there is a, a, a description I have given. Uh, just, just scroll down. There is a job, uh, and there are some uh, sentences written, which shows that there are some fields, environment, uh, and the code version against which this test are running. So. There, is, there should be a particular job, which actually, I'm sure you all guys will be doing something like that. One, one job which deploys code on some server. So there you give already give, giving information uh, on this machine, deploy this code for me. So these two items, I got it. I, I trigger the uh, job. In turn, uh, it deploys the code and triggers all those tests. So it pass on these two details to this test. So this test knows about 
uh, the version number code, code version number, and the where it is run. So this test run, and it keeps saving the data for it. Now, individual test has their own metadata again. They know where the screenshots are placed. They know where the reports are placed, right? So I just aggregated all of those in one screen so that anybody can just quickly click and look, look for the details. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. It's a simple, small effort. Uh, it was not simple at that time. It looks simple now. But yeah, it's a small effort, but can bring, I feel that can bring agility. So it's, it's, the talk is not about just a tool, but to understand, OK, uh, the giving value, importance to your taste feedback is equally important uh, as you give importance to your post-production uh, analysis. Am I, am I able to make sense? Yeah, I think that's yeah. clear. So yeah. maybe another question. So yeah. you know, do you think that is, this has brought a change in the way your team works? Uh? Yes. So uh, the initially, the, the pain point from which it started, that same thing. So we, we felt that, OK, um, we started from zero automated tests to automating things. So we had uh, web tests, and then we created mobile tests. Creating mobile tests alway, uh, already was a very uh, very difficult challenge. And we, the moment we feel the happiness, OK, we return tests, now everything will be caught, the very moment, if something goes wrong, everybody puts point of, a finger on us, oh, look, check. Now we need to check and find the responsibles, and then go back to those guys and ask them. And sometimes we also do en end up doing some mistakes. We might have in, uh, uh, ran the test against wrong version, wrong version, then developer says, it's not my code. What do I do? So that, that heat, if we could reduce in this way, we wanted to do. That was the initial point. And that brought us to the layer wherein everybody w is able to utilize it. So there's one more field in the screenshot, if you see at the right side. Uh, last stable tag. Do you see? Last stable version. That's a pretty interesting uh, one. So this gives uh, DevOps a clarity. If something goes wrong in the production and they want to revert back release to, what kind of versions they can revert back to. So it's a win-win situation for every one of us. That is where what we wanted to head to. So if you are having enormous tests, I, I suggest you should bring in some kind of system. Uh, uh, some paid tools have their own system to display these results for you directly. But this is an open source effort. So maybe you, you can like. You can give a try. You utilize the way I have described the information also there. And if you feel that there is some bug, you can post me. <laughs> Thank you.